All right, back here with Eric Manuel, expert mindset coaching. Um, so the topic for today is attitude, right? Um, as athletes, everybody gets to display an attitude. And um, so maybe just start off with giving a simple definition of what attitude is. Yeah, so attitude is essentially like your mindset, you know, your point of view, your perspective, going into a certain situation. So, you know, you can think of it like the way that you think or feel or act toward um, a certain situation. And so we have attitudes toward everything, you know, like you probably had an attitude about this podcast today, you know, and like, man, I bet Eric's going to be really boring today or man, this is <laughs> really cool, you know. And so these attitudes are really important and they kind of shape our experience and what we get out of that situation that we're going into. You know, so I like to think of them like sunglasses, like, you know, you put on these sunglasses and these are the lenses through which you see and experience the situation in the world in front of you. And if you're constantly putting on these negative, gloomy, pessimistic sunglasses, well, then that's what you're going to see and experience and get out of that, that situation that you're in. But if you're putting on rose colored sunglasses, then that's what you start to get and, and trying to bring awareness to your attitudes so that you can better manage it. Because a lot of people feel like this is something that they don't have control over, but this is something that you can control and it's right. worth the effort to try to control it. Right. Um, sorry, I'm making a note here real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so talk about like, you know, what attitudes should athletes bring to, um, you know, training practice, that sort of thing where, you know, they're obviously how they show up to certain, you know, every day, um, is really important. So talk about, you know, the attitudes, how important and, and what attitudes they should bring when they're showing up for the, for training. Yeah. So in terms of training, like there, there are so many different attitudes that can be, um, like positive for your training session and constructive. Mm -hmm. This is kind of up to the athlete to figure out like, what do they like to focus on from an attitude standpoint when they go train? It might be something like um, self motivation, like I'm really driven right now to work hard and put in the effort, it might be optimism, it might be positivity, it might be enthusiasm, it might be growth mindset. Um, there's a lot of different attitudes that you can bring into a training session. But in general, you want to ask yourself, is this attitude that I'm feeling positive and constructive for the situation that I'm going into? And a lot of people don't even consider this question. And subconsciously, they're having these negative attitudes in these training situations. And it, it might not be an all the time thing, you know, like a lot of times I hear from at coach made us do this drill today. I really hate doing this drill or we have to run sprints after practice today. And I hate when we have to run sprints, right? When you have this negative attitude even toward a specific part of the practice or a specific drill that you're doing in that practice well now you just eliminate your opportunity to grow from that drill mm -hmm. right you close off all these pathways to success and growth and learning because of this negative attitude right running sprints is not a bad thing you know what i mean like you're an athlete you right. have to run sprints you have to get in good shape and when you view it that way and you're like okay Let's run sprints. Let me push myself. This is going to be good for me. I'm going to be able to use this training when I go on the field and compete, right? When you have this like eager, enthusiastic, optimistic attitude toward these negative things in practice, they don't become negative things. You know, right. they become positive um, growth opportunities. But when you view it as like, oh, now we have to run sprints again, you're not going to get anything out of that. Right. Okay? So. Yeah, just trying to make sure that in general, it's it's constructive, you know? Yeah. So really, it's like thinking about it's going through the process, but also like framing it in a way where you're conscious of when it's going to be beneficial for you. Like, I'm, I'm late in the game or late in a, in a fight or, you know, whatever your your event is, and you can rely on the fact that you went, the, went hard in your sprints so that you have the conditioning to, to finish an, an event, right? Exactly. And that's something that helps a lot is just thinking like, well, what am I getting out of this? You know, right. coaches aren't just, you know, sadistic 
people. They they don't just make you run because they like to see you suffer and bleed. Like they right. they're doing it for a reason. And if you can also understand that reason, it becomes a lot easier for you to put in that work as well. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing with people who have a hard time uh, adopting exercise habits. You know, yeah. because all they're focusing on are the negative aspects. I don't want to get sweaty. I don't want to get tired. I don't want to get sore. Like uh, I don't have the time and. And that's all they're focused on. That's their attitude toward exercise. Mm -hmm. But when they redevelop their attitude toward exercise and they say, oh, well, this will be positive for my physical health. This will be positive for my mental health, both short term and long term. Like the, when they start focusing on the things that they're able to get out of this experience, then it becomes a lot easier to go through that experience. Right. right? right. And then mm -hmm. it becomes enjoyable even. You know, there are people who really love to exercise. Right. Yeah because they cultivated a, a really positive and constructive attitude toward that that right. exercise right yeah, yeah i mean i always marvel at the kids um you know like observing youth soccer the ones who there was a kid on my son's team for example and he ended up going to west point so you wow. know he's a little he's a little crazy in between <laughs> years anyway but uh yeah. i'm kidding um but he you know he'd get taken off the field and you know sub subbed out and towards the end of the game and he'd be doing push-ups and sprints on the sideline, right? Because he felt like he needed more. Um, and so that's like the next step to giving your all in training is to like go above and beyond, right? I mean, yeah. the person yeah. who does that has adopted a really good um, mindset as far as their development is concerned. Yeah. And, and in particular toward things like, you know, hard work, <laughs> effort, self-motivation, you know, and you'll see this all the time. And, in the training environment, like who's staying after practice, right? You know, like who's willing to put in that work and nobody's forcing you to, right? right. Uh, the people who are staying after, like they're displaying that they have these certain attitudes or right. mindsets or perspective toward the work. They're not in there just doing the bare minimum and going home. Right. Like they're understanding that this hard work is going to pay off. And so they're willing to do what the coach asks and then they're willing to do even more. Right. And that's right. all about how they're viewing the situation, how they're viewing work in general. Right. And, and training and drilling and, um, you know, going through that process. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and then those people, those athletes who are staying after and doing that extra work, well, they they have more success. You know right. what I mean? Like, there is a correlation between hard work and success in sports and, um, you know, making sure you have a positive attitude toward that hard work. You know, you hear a lot of embrace the grind. Right. Right. That's the same idea, you know, have a good attitude toward the grind, embrace it, enjoy it, understand that, you know, this process is the process that's going to allow you to grow and um, get closer to mastery. Right. Um, so you worked hard all week uh, training and now you have your competition, you know, whether it's a, a soccer game, football game, a fight, you know, whatever you have going on competition wise. So, you know, talk about the, you know, what a great attitude would be when you're showing up to compete yeah and so again like i mentioned with practice this this kind of depends on the individual athlete you know each <clears throat> athlete has their own um kind of preferred attitudes or optimal attitudes that help them to compete at their best you know mm -hmm. some athletes like to be really really locked in and focused and serious and they're not joking around at all to mm -hmm. them it's like do or die other athletes they're like this is a game you know what I mean? Let's have fun. I'm with my friends. Like, let's play. Let's ball out. This is going to be a good time. Right. And so it's about figuring out what attitude works best for you, what emotions help you to compete at your best. Um, but I think there are some general ones that kind of apply to most everybody. You know, things like confidence, um, competitiveness, resilience, optimism, um, presence, you know, being in the moment. Right. I think these things are pretty pretty helpful and constructive for for most athletes uh, but I want to bring up resilience because I think this is a really really important one and you know you see a lot of times in in games and matches and fights where one of the teams starts to gain an advantage you know maybe they go up you know 20 points at halftime um, and the other team has that they have an option here you know they're at this fork in the road where they can say to themselves, 
all right, it wasn't our night today, boys. Like, I know we got half a game left. Let's just go through the motions and, you know, right. do what we can. And, you know, we'll get on the bus and forget about it and, and move on to the next one. Now, the game's still going on, right? And so that that's one pathway. The other pathway is I think we can do this. You know, I know it's crazy. I know we're losing right now, but I believe in us. I know I know kind of what we were doing wrong. And if we just fix these mistakes, we can make the adjustments to go out there and and regain the lead and win this game. Right. You know, and when you choose to have one of these two attitudes, they're going to send you down two very different pathways. Right. right. And this negative attitude, the destructive attitude, it eliminates all your opportunity for success and to get that outcome that you ultimately want. Right. You totally pull yourself out of the game. And there's no chance of a comeback. Right. Now, if you have the positive attitude, it doesn't guarantee a comeback. And that's the important part. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a lot of people think like, oh, if I think positive and if I'm optimistic, I'm going to win all my games. Like, that's It's not that simple. But at least you give yourself a chance. And that's what's yep. important. Like you, you stay in the fight, you know, and that's yep. resilience. That's being able to get hit, get knocked down and get back up and say, let's go. I want some more. Like I'm not done yet. You know what I mean? And as long as there's time on the clock, I'm going to keep fighting and I'm going to keep doing what I can to win. So, you know, displaying that resilience in competition is really important because most of the time when you go out and compete, it's not just this smooth sailing. Everything goes your way, like, right? Especially when you start working your way up to higher and higher levels, the people you're competing against are also high level, you know, and they're right. going to go out there and give everything they have. So you you have to expect some adversity. You have to expect getting scored on, getting mm -hmm. hit, get taken down, and be able to say, all right, cool. I expected that. Let's keep going. You know, yeah. I'm not done yet. So, um, yeah, resilience in terms of competition, I think, is really, really important. Uh, um, let's let's talk about one quick example. So yep. a week ago, um, from when we were recording this, uh, Colorado and Stanford played a football game. Um, yes. And Colorado was up twenty nine nothing, I believe, at halftime. I, I believe think so. That's, I think that's right. So, two starkly different conversations at halftime in those two different locker rooms, right? I mean, and it's like two different type, two different um, flavors of resilience, right? As far as like the team that's up twenty nine nothing has to be resilient and 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 take care of their business which they didn't, Colorado didn't. And then, you know, obviously Stanford did what you're talking about where they were like, all right, the, the getting punched in the mouth this hard, you know, in the first half isn't going to destroy our resilience. Right. So I, I it's a, it's a great example and um, something to like, think about, you know, whichever side you're on. Right. Exactly. And, and so for the Colorado side, right. What, what, would have helped them probably is leaning more towards um, their mental toughness, their discipline, right? And something that Alabama does really well, and I hate that I'm bringing this up, <laughs> you know, focusing on the process and not the yeah. outcome. Because right, I right. guarantee you those Colorado players at halftime were thinking about the outcome and saying, oh, we won this. Mm -hmm. It's over. You know, right. we're up 29 points. Like, they're not going to come. The game is won. No matter how bad we play, mm -hmm. we're going to get that W and we're going to go home. So they were so focused on that outcome and they forgot about their process. Like, hold on, we still have to play good football if we want to win. Like, right. it's not that simple. You know, we're not playing a yeah. high school JV team. Like, this is still a legitimate D1 football team that yeah. has the ability to score 29 points in a half, you know. So they just completely forgot about their process. And part of their process was probably staying disciplined, listening to the game plan, executing, being mentally tough, mm -hmm. uh, displaying grit and hardiness and resilience. And when you focus on the, the outcome, you, you start to get away from your performance and what allowed you to go up 29 points in the first place. Right, right. You know, what, what they should have been saying in their mind was, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. You know, we're yeah. going into the second half, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Let's win this half just like we won the first half. And if yeah. we do that... Well, then we went 58 to zero, you know, and that right. could have happened because they already showed that they they had that ability in the first half, you know, right. but they just got away from it. So, you know, focusing on the outcome too much as opposed to the process. Right. Um, last question. OK, so uh, talk about, you know, we've talked a lot about 
how to show up to different things. How do you develop the mindset to have the right attitude in certain situations? You know, how do you, yeah, talk about how you develop an attitude, the attitude. Yeah. And so I guess the, the first important thing to talk about here is that this is happening already, you know, like we already have attitudes that are being developed subconsciously mm -hmm. and unconsciously. And so the first step is to bring awareness to the attitudes that you have already been developing over the course of your life, right? All of your life experiences up to this point have created these attitudes that you currently have about certain things. You know, you, you hear a lot of students saying things like, well, I'm just bad at math or I'm bad at reading or I'm not a good writer. And these are attitudes that they hold towards these certain subjects and that impacts their ability to perform and grow and learn in those subjects. Mm -hmm. So we already have a lot of attitudes, right? So the first step is to bring awareness to these attitudes. What are some of your positive attitudes? What are some of your negative attitudes? Mm -hmm. What are the attitudes that help you and are constructive and move you forward? And what are the attitudes that hold you back and get in the way of your ability to go out and perform and to learn and to grow? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step, bringing awareness to this and then also understanding the consequences that come from these attitudes. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we talked about, you know, running sprints, for example, if you have a negative attitude toward running sprints, well, then every time the coach mentions this and brings it up, you're right. going to feel unmotivated and negative, you know, right. um, or like every time we play this team, you know, they're the best team in the state. You know, every time we play them, you're going to feel scared and uh, pessimistic about y'all's chances right. of winning the game. Right. So if you understand that you have these certain attitudes, that's good. You know, bring awareness to it. And now you can start to do something about it. And so right. what I would do is I would identify what your most frequently used negative attitudes are. You know, like if every single time I go to practice, I think this negative thing. Well, that's really common. You know, you might do this every single day. Right. So I would start there. Those are your low hanging fruit. Right. right. And what you would want to do is create new preset attitudes for these situations. Right. If you have a negative attitude every single time coach makes you do a certain drill, well, ask yourself, how could I view this in a better way? How yeah. could I view this in a way that's going to allow me to get the most out of this drill and to mm -hmm. learn? Yeah, I might not like it. That's cool. Like you don't have to like everything, but you can still find a way to look at it and a perspective to take that's going to help you perform and to grow in that moment. Right. right. So. The second step is creating these preset attitudes that you can then use in these moments. And then the final step is using the attitudes, you know, and, and this can be the hardest one because it takes mindfulness. It takes um, control in that moment to say, no, I'm, I'm not going to go down this pathway that I've already created for myself. That's really, really deep and easy for me to slip into. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what happens when we start, you know, um, having these really, really, um, like set ideas and beliefs uh, that have taken place over time is our minds slip into them so easily, right? right? And when you're rewiring your brain, you have to create a new pathway. And that right. pathway initially is not going to be very deep. It's not going right. to be easy for your mind to slip into it. So you have to continually put yourself in this situation and get the reps of being in this situation and having this positive attitude okay, will feel natural. And it will become, hopefully, your default pathway so that it doesn't have to be this conscious uh, cognitive control of like, OK, I'm forcing myself to have this attitude. It just that's right. just the way you think about the situation now. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and I imagine, you know, most athletes feel a sense of pride once they've like persevered through something hard or something they didn't want to do. I mean, right. how many times did you, were you like? I don't feel like doing that today. And, you know, you did it anyway, and you're always glad you did. I mean, I, I've never, like, regretted, you know, doing something I didn't want to, you know, necessarily do that I knew that was good for me. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to talk, like, real quick is um, you mentioned earlier, like, you know, what kind of glasses you put on is going to, you know, determine your attitude in a lot of ways. But like you're also putting those glasses on people who are observing you. And so in my mind, like if you have a, a bad attitude, like I just saw this video with Gina and, you know, which was obviously reflective of her attitude and how he yeah. benched her. 
I mean, are probably one of the best college basketball players of all time and you bench her, right? Yeah. And, you know, it was all based on her attitude. And so people who are making decisions on how you, you know, how you get to participate are also observing your attitude through your body language. So put the rose colored glasses on the, the people who are coaching you and that sort of thing um, as well through your, through your attitude and body language. Absolutely. You know, yep. and, and like you said, just the, your attitude and your body language are linked, you know, a hundred percent. And, and um, you know, whatever attitude you're feeling is going to be presented through your body language and 60% of all communication comes is nonverbal, you know? Right. So when you're out there playing on the field and you've got coaches or scouts that are recruiting you, like they're not observing your verbal communication. They're not observing your written communication. They're observing your body language. Right. And your body language is going to be a direct reflection of your attitude. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, yeah, you, you definitely want to make sure that whatever message you're sending out to these people that might be determining if you're going to go play college there, like right. you want that to be a good message. Right. You, know? yep. you want to be showing the message of, you know, I'm a good teammate. I'm a leader. I know how to cooperate. I know how to communicate effectively. I know how to be positive. Like I'm focused on the team, all, all these things that they might want to see. You've got to make sure that you're sending that stuff out. But there, there's another element of like being authentic, you know, like you, you can fake it, you know, and that might work. But at some point, you've got to do the deep work as well. You know, you've got to really develop these things so that it's not a matter of faking it. But this is just truly how you are. Because let's say you're able to fake it and then you get to college, well, you're going to get found out pretty, pretty quick, you know, yeah. and then you have a big problem on your hands, you know, yeah. so yeah. Um, build these attitudes up in a true way so right. that you don't have to fake it. You don't have to pretend to be a good teammate. You don't have to pretend to care. No, you genuinely care. Right. Yeah. Man, there's so much more to delve in there, but yeah. uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to leave it at that. So, cool. um, uh, Eric, tell people how to reach out to you um, if they're interested in learning more and, and, you know, sharing their personal stories with you. Yeah. So my email is expertmindsetcoaching at gmail.com. You can also go to my website, expertmindsetcoaching.com. And then on Instagram, I'm just expertmindsetcoaching. So it's all the same, expertmindsetcoaching. Mm -hmm. That's the name of my business. And so you can find that on, on any of those platforms. But yeah, reach out. I'd love to, um, you know, talk to any athletes, coaches, parents who feel like they need help or would just like mm -hmm. to learn or talk more about this kind of stuff. Cool. Um, until next time, right? Yeah. Awesome. Uh -huh. Thank you so All much, right. Scott. Thank you, Eric.